So we saw in this last definition why limb soup gets its name. It's the limit of the suprema of the tails uh, as the tail that we look at marches out towards infinity. And so because it's defined in terms of a limit, because there is a convergent sequence, namely the sequence of the suprema of the tails in play here, then there should be a way of defining limb soup um, that looks a lot like the way that we define limit of a sequence. Um, going back to our four stage, four clause definition of convergence, right? For all epsilon greater than or equal to zero, there exists a capital N, natural number is such that for all little n's greater than or equal to capital N, the absolute value of Sn minus L is less than epsilon, right? There should be a version of this definition that looks like that because a limb soup really is a limit. It's a kind of limit. So here is our definition that looks an awful lot more like a limit than it does uh, a supremum. And what I actually am going to do is, is I'm going to blur out part of this definition real quickly. And I just want to look at these four clauses. For all epsilon greater than or equal to 0, there exists an n, which is natural, such that for all n greater than or equal to n, we have Sn minus L, where L here is the limb soup, is less than epsilon. My first question is, what's different between this definition and the original definition for convergence? There's one element that's missing. Yeah, what's missing from this definition is it's missing the absolute value on Sn minus L, right? If I, if I slap an absolute value sign around that difference, now I'm not defining limb soup at all. I'm defining the limit of Sn as n tends to infinity. So it's worth thinking for a moment about what that does to our intuition okay, about what a limit means versus what a limit superior means. So here's a sequence that definitely doesn't look like it's a convergent sequence. It looks like it's just, well, basically a bunch of points on a sine curve. Um, and it's another example of a sequence where I think, I think if I look at the numbers on the axes over here, it looks like probably the limit superior of this sequence is equal to, if this is minus 2, 0, 2, limb soup is probably equal to one, again, I would guess, right? If I just, again, kind of take the tops of these crests, um, it looks like the tops of the crests are actually equal to one. So we end up, if we, if we choose the sequence 4 plus 16k, uh, if I take the 4 plus 16kth terms of this sequence, the 4th, the 20th, the 36th, and so on, um, it looks like all those are actually equal to one. So the limit of that subsequence would be equal to one. Um, but let's think about for a moment why it's not true that the limit of the sequence is 1. If the limit of the sequence were 1, then it needs to be true that for any epsilon that I pick, no matter how small that I want to make epsilon, epsilon is the radius of this little strip, um, that the terms of this sequence are going to enter that strip and never leave past some capital N. Right? Some tail of the sequence will be con entirely contained within that strip. And that's not happening for this sequence. Because even though the sequence does enter into that strip quite often, it also ends up breaking out of that strip just as soon as it entered, basically. Right? So here I have a couple terms that are inside, but then immediately it breaks through the floor and goes back out. Then it comes back in again, but it breaks through the floor again. But notice what it's not doing. It's not breaking through the ceiling of this strip ever. Right? It gets in, but then it gets out by going downward. And it never gets out by going upward. So while it's not true that there exists while it's not true that there exists a capital N such that for all n greater than or equal to capital N, we have absolute value of Sn minus L minus 1 is less than epsilon. So that's not a true statement. We never get inside of that strip. But because we never crash through the ceiling, what if we just took this floor? and just drop that floor right out from under, under it. Right? So that we no longer care about dropping through the floor. We only care about preventing the sequence from crashing through the ceiling. What I'm saying is, let's just do that instead. Right? Forget about the floor. Only use the ceiling for a bound. Now, is it true that there exists a capital N such that for all n greater than or equal to n, we have not that the absolute value of Sn minus 1 is less than epsilon, but that Sn itself minus 1 is less than epsilon. Is it true that this sequence eventually enters into the red shaded region and never leaves? 
yeah, that's still true. Right? Um, and that remains true no matter which epsilon I choose. If I choose a, a larger value for epsilon, then yeah, we still remain within this red shaded area. If I choose a smaller value for epsilon, we're still within this shaded area. No matter how small I make this epsilon, that still remains true. Right? Um, but the question then is, why is the limb soup one? Because it would also be true that I could lower the ceiling as close as I want to to two and still have an accurate definition. So if I want the limb soup to follow this new idea, I need to also still have the notion that I've got the lowest possible ceiling in here, right? Um, that my L plus epsilon has to get arbitrarily close to my sequence, uh, however close I want it to get asymptotically. And so there's one more element that gets added into the definition besides the bit that we just saw. And that other remaining element is we not only need it to be true that there always exists a tail of the sequence for which Sn minus L is less than epsilon, we also need to choose L to be as small as possible. Right. Again, it's that lowest ceiling idea. And so the fullness of this definition is that it's the smallest L, the infimum among all L that have this property. Um, so the, again, the way that I think about it is that I think about it as the same as the convergence definition, except that I drop the floor out, and I ensure that the L that I choose is as small as possible. And what's great about that is that in any proof where you're trying to make a connection between a limit and a limb soup, using this form of the definition is super handy. Because in the definition of limit, we have this absolute value. That absolute value means that the quantity Sn minus L has to be bounded between plus epsilon and minus epsilon. And we get limit superior and we get limit inferior by choosing only one of those two inequalities. Limit superior for Sn minus L less than epsilon, the, the top side, the upper bound, and limit inferior for the lower bound on the lower side. Minus epsilon is less than Sn minus L. And so using this form of the definition makes it easier to make those connections.